Hey everyone, it's me, Eric Kimball, back here with another video. This is kind of a part two video. If you watched my previous video, you know about my Whizbang Garden Wind Vane, the prototype that I made eight years ago. And I showed that to you. I showed you how well it has weathered the storms, how well it has weathered the weather for eight years here in upstate New York. And I told you that I had uh, moved beyond the prototype to making actual whiz-bang garden wind vanes. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the new product. This is a new Planet Whizbang product. Uh, it's in this box right here. Okay, I'm going to unbox it when you uh, purchase one of these, and I'll give you a link at the end of this video. You will be able to open the box, and there will be the Whizbang Garden Wind Vane. It'll be nicely packaged. This is the pivot assembly. I'll show you that in a moment. But you can pick up your new garden wind vane and remove that cardboard there, and remove that cardboard there, and remove that cardboard there. And we will set this aside. Whoops. And there it is. This is the Whizbang Garden Wind Vane. And we'll open our little package here and get out the pivot assembly. This is a very simple wind vane, but it is a remarkable wind vane. If you haven't watched that previous video, you should watch that. It's required watching. So there we go. And it'll, it'll pivot on a Zephyr. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this is made. The beam, the wood beam right here, is pine, like this right here. And it's clear pine, meaning that it doesn't have any knots. But it may have a little dent or, or something like that. It's uh, not necessarily flawless, but it doesn't have any knots. It's a good solid piece of pine. You can see that I uh, bandsaw a slot for the uh, tail and the point, and I have my weights on here. Now, what I do after I get the wind vane to this point is I paint it, and I paint it with aluminum paint. And that is an old sign painter's trick, to use aluminum paint as a primer. I've done it a lot over the years, and it is a superior primer. It really is a great primer. So that's on here. I paint that on by hand. And then I spray paint. I use a can, spray paint. And um, that does a pretty good job. I hang these in my shed, my garden shed, on strings and, and I spray them. The paint job on these, I need to tell you, if you buy one of these, you may find uh, drips. In fact, if you get one of these without drips, you know, sags or whatever you want to call them, uh, that would be the exception because I'm not a good spray painter. Yeah, I could see some right here. And there might be a, uh, a bristle from the paintbrush in here. Things like that. Cosmetic things. There's nothing wrong structurally. It's going to work beautifully for you. But there is some cosmetic issues with the paint job. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's a minor thing, I think. Keep in mind, these are made by an old guy in a shed. The uh, tail and the point are 0 .040 aluminum, and it's not new. These uh, pieces are made from drops. Okay, I purchase them. I purchase them from a, uh, a fabricator that, that it's scrap for them. It's drops, and I, so I get a good price on it. So you might see a little scuffing or something like that on the, uh, no serious damage, but it might be dulled or slightly discolored or, or scuffed if you uh, take a close look. But these are cosmetic things that will be inconspicuous when you get them up a, a short distance. You know, three feet away, you really don't even see anything like that. Three, four feet, that's the definition of inconspicuous, you know. Four feet away, you can't see whatever it is that you can see up here. All right, so you might be interested to know the length. This is shorter than the prototype. Total length is 22 and a half, 23 inches, somewhere in 
that uh, area. And being shorter, it's actually more responsive to the wind. And I, this came to me when I actually made a uh, wind vane that was considerably bigger than my prototype, which is over there. And uh, what I saw, what I observed, because I made several of these and you know, put them up for several days and watched them to see mm, what I might be able to do to make them better. And what I noticed is that with the big wind vane that I made, it was the pole that it's on, the freestanding pole, it was moving a lot more. And the wind vane was responding to the wind, but it, there was a delay. It was kind of like being buffeted and, and moving and then turning around. And I thought, hmm, well, if I make it a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, will it be even more responsive than the prototype, which I've been perfectly satisfied with. And I think it, I think it is. I think it uh, presents less of a, uh, a barrier to wind on the broad side and it flips around quicker. Flips around quicker, more responsive, being smaller. And the important thing is that even though this is a little bit shorter than my prototype, it is still visible 150 feet away from my house to the far end of my garden. I can still see this quite well. Being red, I can see it um, even better than the green one that's there. Okay, let's talk about the pivot assembly right here. This is how it will come. I assign it with a Sharpie, my name right there, and I have a little label that has the date that I made it, the year that I made it. Okay, and this is ready to go as far as um, putting your wind vane on it. And uh, you, there, it's just, it's ready to catch the zephyrs and ride the storms. But there's one thing you, you're gonna need to do, and I'm leaving this up to you. You're going to need to put the masking tape bushings here at the top and here down near the bottom. And right here is a pivot assembly that I have put the masking tape bushings on. And I have put bushings on so that this will fit very snugly, no rattling around, into this pipe right here, which is three quarter inch EMT conduit. The uh, prototype wind vane has a pole that is one inch EMT conduit. It's so I would need a bigger uh, tape bushing, top and bottom. Uh, but here for our purposes, I'm, I found this piece of three quarter inch conduit and I have sized the tape so that it goes in snugly. You slide it right down, just like that. No wiggle. And this one and a half inch fender washer at the top acts as a cap, okay? So if your pipe is under an inch and a half, it's, it's going to protect it. It's going to protect your tape bushings. They're gonna last and it'll protect my name and my hopefully my little label there. So yeah, that's what you're going to have to do because I don't know what kind of pipe you're going to be using. Get yourself some masking tape or another tape and, and just take your time and wrap, wrap it around and around to create the thickness you need to have a bushing, have the bushings, top and bottom, that, that hold that in there securely. Isn't that something? Now, I wanna show you or explain to you how you can easily make the freestanding pole and um, that you're going to mount your uh, whiz-bang garden wind vane on. Okay, there's our prototype wind vane. It's been there eight years. That's uh, on top of a piece of one inch EMT conduit. And you buy that EMT conduit at the home center, Lowe's or Home Depot. It's 10 foot long and it is uh, attached with wire. You could attach it with hose clamps. It's attached here in this instance though with wire to the T post right there. I got a piece of wire there. And down at the bottom, I got another piece of wire. And uh, I have more than a three foot overlap on that pole, on that post, I should say. And I think three foot is a good overlap. And if you get your T-post foot and a half to two feet in the ground, get a three foot overlap for the conduit, um, you're gonna have a, a secure arrangement there. This uh, pole does not offer much resistance, it moves but it comes back into position. It flexes 
as needed. The last thing I want you to know that's important is uh, right there, there's a screw. Yeah, in the a conduit. It's a sheet metal screw, drill a hole enough uh, so that you can get that sheet metal screw in there real easy. And uh, you see how it just rests on the top of the T-post. So the wires just hold the pole to the T-post and that screw keeps it from moving down. All right, that's, that's how it's done. That's how I've done it. And yeah, there we go. So back in the shade here, I'm gonna finish this video up by telling you a couple of more things. First of all, I neglected to explain earlier, and I want to explain that this uh, pivot receiver right here, this white thing, is positioned exactly at the balance point on this. It's the center of gravity, but it's the balance point. And I position it there by uh, balancing each one of these that I've made on a, a 1 8 inch strip of metal that I have fastened to the vise in my little shop here. And I set it on that metal and I move it this way and this way until it doesn't tip this way and it doesn't tip this way. It just holds right there. That's the exact balance point. And I make a little pencil mark and uh, you can't see it because it's inconspicuous, but there is a little mark there. That is the exact balance point, the center of gravity. And I then put the pivot receiver on accordingly. So every one of these gets custom balanced. And that's, uh, that's a big deal. That's important for a good functioning, long lasting wind vane. Now, finally, I want to tell you that I have made 50 of these. My first production run, 50, 50 of these. And that might be a lifetime supply, um, but that's okay, because I got friends. I don't know if I have 50 friends, but I got a lot of friends, and these would make good gifts. This is my modus operandi for creating Whizbang products. You create your product, you bring it to, to the world with the internet. It's so easy, and it doesn't cost anything. So you bring your idea to the world, you present it, and you say, hey, I got these. And they sell, or they don't. And, um, you know, that's the way it works. And if they don't sell, well, that's okay. We go to the next product. But in any event, I got 50 of these packaged up, ready to ship. If they go fast, which would be kind of nice, right? Come up with a product, put it on YouTube, and it sells out fast. Yeah, if they go fast, I'll make more. But it could be a while. So uh, that concludes this video. And I appreciate you watching. And I'll see you in the next one.